Risk 5 or Risk V finds some development momentum riding atop a secret cow surfing down the river Ganges. And uh, the UK's NCSC uh, advises on Ubuntu security. Dubiously, in my opinion. DARPA drops $35 million on open sourcing SOCs because they realize the future of SOCs is open. And Mozilla is changing the Firefox icons and they want your feedback. And everyone's favorite first distribution, Ubuntu 1804, has a point release. It is out. Are you willing to take that Pepsi challenge? I know um, I did a long time ago because I'm crazy like that. And um, escaping Vim, no longer an option. It's come to the web browser. Sounds terrifying. But we're going to talk about that and a gang of other stuff because it's another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. Back the Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Look at all the we're a bunch of waving fools. That's it. We'll do the wave. That requires being organized, and we're not good at that. Hey, beautiful people, what's going on? I'm old man Vin. Uh, that is Jill Bryant in LA getting ready to rock out with her Spock out, however that works. That's a euphemism. Yeah. And uh Britannia, one Pedro Mateus joining us and enjoying his uh week off, right? Yeah. Right. It is. Uh, I got a, a week off mostly because Originally, I was going to go to Portugal. Then we looked at the plane ticket prices and said, nope. Mm. So here I am. Oh, well, Aww. I'm glad you're with us. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, as Ben says, I am grokking Spock. And um, I'm getting ready to go to the big Star Trek convention in Vegas tomorrow. And I got my broadcasting rig ready so I can broadcast the with the fi- the Friday night foo bar on Friday night from the convention. And that's going to be a whole lot of fun. <laughs> Neat. Um, I'm doing some contract work, but I'm also getting our website, like putting a little extra bits of polish on it and all that. And I've done some, according to Jordan, I've replaced the theme. So <laughs> make of that what you will, but go check it out. LinuxGameCast.com yes. in case you're wondering where that business is at. Okay, kids, let's just get right into it because we want to talk about this point release because the wait's over and, well, it's not, not really a whole lot going on, man. Uh, this is from Beta News. Uh, all this business is going to be in our show notes. 1804.1 LTS Bionic Beaver is now available for download. Most of the work in this is kernel level hardware support, upgrade fixes just for the installing, and a gang of Nomi desktop bits. Uh, I do want to point out because somebody asked me earlier this week and I didn't laugh. I was doing good. But this is the legitimate question. They're like, how do I upload this? Uh, not upload it, download this. Uh, do, do I need a PPA? Why can I not see it in my system update? I'm like, are you running 1804? Like, yeah. It's like, you got it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, it's already worry. installed. Point releases or for new media. I almost said DVDs. They don't, those don't exist anymore. But for thumb, <laughs> thumb drives and upload it like that. So, Joe, what are your thoughts on this? You, you already oh. updated though, right? Yeah, I have 1804 on several machines, but actually my main rig right now still has a 1604 on it. So when I when I get back from the convention, I'll probably start updating this one to 18.04.01. And yes, now you can upgrade from 1404 and 1604 LTS without worrying because all the bugs have been worked out since the April release of 1804 um, LTS. So now is the time to do it. <laughs> yeah, we've yeah, been waiting for this a long time. <laughs> if you're still on uh, 1404, mm-hmm. it's probably the good time to update because uh, yeah. support for that ends next year. Yes. Uh, <laughs> on my end, I just uh, I have the I have Lubuntu 1804.1 uh, working on the T42 that upgraded obviously without an itch, uh, without a hitch. There we go. <laughs> Uh, and <laughs> it's a very <laughs> itchy <laughs> upgrade. <laughs> uh, and uh, I also have a VM because I saw everyone was talking about, oh, GNOME. Uh, uh, it's the big LTS that uh, Ubuntu has now that they've returned to GNOME. So I downloaded the um, the default version a while back and I installed it in a VM on my uh, ThinkPad and it uh, the uh, X240. And it's, yeah, it works reasonably well in a kvm that's about as much uh criticism mm-hmm. as i have for it at this point <laughs> it's working um no issues here that's what we're running on 
this box and it's also working on the box that Jill's coming through on. Um, not for it, any, just, it happened to be on a thumb drive. It was kind of already down here. So it, it got on, it was going to get fedora on it, but yeah. Oh, cause you know, Jordan and I was like, oh, you're on a fedora box, buddy. It's broke. You fix it. Uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> so it works. Go check it out. Take the Pepsi challenge. 1404 going to 1804. Uh, flying mm-hmm. spaghetti monster speed, uh, brave sir or madam who's undertaking that DARPA. Yes. Yes. So, uh, DARPA drops 35 million on posh open source hardware project. Oh, this, this is, uh, actually really awesome that the government is doing this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, <laughs> DARPA has finally realized and businesses have finally realized that open hardware, just like open soft, software can lead to a quicker turnover, turnover rate and reduce development time and costs. And yeah, they realize this is the future. And, uh, the first recipients, um, are universities and research institutions, as well as IBM, Intel, NVIDIA and Qualcomm and the like. So um, this is really, you know, really awesome that they realize that it's not just open software that's the future, but open hardware for SOCs. And again, this will make their development time faster. Um, it just just makes it all around a, a lot better, <laughs> a lot better for I us mean, too as well. <laughs> Thirty-five million wet sticky caches is, is a lot of money, and yeah, it's uh, open source hardware. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really, <laughs> really cool. And it's actually going to increase to 1.5 billion over the next five years. Ooh. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, they do say posh. <laughs> Just posh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Could posh have picked is... a better name. Um, I know. It's intended as a yeah. new open source processor. Uh, it's not intended, but it's going to be working <laughs> with Risk V and all this fun stuff. So I like this. Uh, it's good in a. Uh, it's mm, here, here's the only problem. What's oh, oh, the most terrifying words? I, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this time they're actually doing something good. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Posh is a strange name. It stands for, again, Posh Open Source Hardware. And even though they're actually probably going to be inexpensive <laughs> SOCs. <laughs> Well, something that could be oh, relatively well. inexpensive and why I said risk V and yeah. my brain's not working is what we're going to talk about yeah. next, Pedro. Yeah. Yes. Uh, up mm-hmm. next, we have a little story from Geek Dave. And uh, they mentioned that India's first risk V based chip is here. And not only that, uh, it also boots Linux. It's the Shak- Shakti processor. You, and, did, you uh, did better than I would. <laughs> <laughs> Shakti, I think. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, it's. Um, it's a risk uh, v based architecture uh, that runs an actual operating system, which is pretty good. And it's uh, it's being developed, of course, in India. And this is the big advantage of open hardware. It's the uh, places like India and um, other countries with a low per capita income. They, but they are very much willing to get into the technology, and there's a lot of technology being adopted there. India was the place where Firefox, uh, that Firefox mobile OS, was booming until Mozilla said, "Yeah, no." So, uh, yeah, no, it's it's going to be hard to break out of a place, uh, out of like a place that's desperate for cheap technology and into the rest of the world. But if they gain a significant enough uh, market there, it may only take someone with uh, some spare wet sticky caches to go, oh, that could be interesting for some specialized use over here. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm totally looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, and actually Intel did uh, fund this. So that's that's really awesome. And it is a, a this is a low power 400 megahertz prototype. And yeah, as Pedro was saying, they were really excited that it booted Linux on the very first try. So that was awesome. <laughs> that was. That was very surprising to see. They posted it on the Twitter account. I was like, oh, right. Risk V, that's neat. I'm looking forward. You know, you just want to jump 10 years ahead and see how this plays out against ARM. I mean, yeah, this is not going to be replacing any devices soon, but it the journey's just starting. 
And that's very yes. exciting. Awesome. Very exciting. <laughs> so since we like talking about um, American governments, let's talk about the UK government. <laughs> considering ah, the we, government who spawned it. <laughs> uh, or, or, or as some people call it, your boss. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, technically, yeah. Uh, I work for the UK government. So, uh, yeah, the UK government published a list of uh, Ubuntu 1804 LTS security tips. And the fine folks at OMG Ubuntu have broken down the list into some very easy to read uh, bullet points as configure remote access via VPN. Sure. Uh, improve passwords with the PAM password quality module. Okay. Uh, set a maximum screen lock timeout. Yes, please. A lot of people tend to walk away and leave their screens unlocked. I know. Uh, the Disable error reporting popularity contest. Eh, popularity contest. Yes, error reporting. Eh, I guess if you are in a corporate environment. Yes, that makes sense. Uh, configure UEFI for secure boot protection. I'm not entirely sure telling Microsoft about my boot habits. <laughs> uh, is the best way uh, to make my system more secure. But let's yeah. let's go. Maybe maybe they'll redeem themselves. Uh, enable live patch for kernel updates without rebooting. Yeah, it's questionable. Only install snaps from the snap store. Kind of yeah. defeats the purpose of snaps. <laughs> yes. But sure. Uh, external interface <laughs> protection. Yeah, that's just a given. Uh, prevent execution of binary files from the home partition. Eh? Science. What? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right after that, you unplug your Ethernet cable and you fill all the holes with hot glue. I mean, it's perfect security. <laughs> it's like if you're going to uh, disallow execu uh, execution of binary files from anywhere, make it from RAM or any of the other folders that aren't, uh, you know, limited to the user mm -hmm. uh whichever user is currently using the device or i mean i i i guess i can see it <laughs> it's an interesting it's idea one. man but um yeah. the security thing with the timeout i'm down with that google released a port uh what was that a report like last week or week before last because they've switched to um hardware authentication mm -hmm. and they're like yeah 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 that's a really good idea that might be something to look into but Good on yeah. that. I mean, Jill, what do you think? Did, did you read that and you go, oh, oh yes. that's all painfully obvious? Or Yeah, yeah, very much so. But um, again, these are just recommendation, recommendations and guidance by the UK's National Cyber Pedro, Security you're rubbing Center on us. and not a, not a set of mandatory <laughs> instructions. So this is just, you know, kind of a guideline to use. And they do realize that Ubuntu is very secure because <laughs> it is Linux. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to agree with our theorem about secure boot as uh, somebody who set up uh, yeah. these Dells. Thanks, Mike. Uh, mm. These were <laughs> business class machines. And at one point in their life, let's, let's be honest, at one point. Yeah. Um, but they had all the secure boot and the lockdown and the BIOS within the button. It's like, no. So, yeah. <laughs> I just need to get that off my chest. Uh, Pedro. Yes. <laughs> yes. What would be the so, first thing you would do with your Dell XPS 13 after you removed Ubuntu 18.04 from it? Uh, quite possibly install Fedora on it, uh, but that's me. Uh, I thought you would install Pop! OS and buy like a System76 sticker. And see if you my name it. is not Strider. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, no, it's uh, I absolutely do still want one of these, but it's just a quick mention. The Dell XPS 13 9370, the latest version, is now available with Ubuntu 1804 out of the box. That's good. That's how it should be. Uh, I'm surprised that Dell took this long to uh, push it out, but it is here now, and it's mm -hmm. it's a monster. It's one of those teeny tiny. Uh, the screen is 13.3, but with that infinity bezel, as they call it, um, they are actually about the size of an 11.6 inch uh, laptop. So it is Ants. very tidy. Yeah, very tidy, very good looking, and I absolutely would totally mm -hmm. not kill someone for one Listen, of the 1080 I, oh, yeah. I looked at it for the 8 gig model they want 1050 I was like, mm. mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> xps oh, yeah well, go yeah. ahead joe go ahead oh uh they do have five different variations of it which was really nice they have they have a whole a uh, lot of different price ranges <laughs> 
If you're going to get a laptop <laughs> and, and you know you don't want to pay the system seventy six tax, which there's nothing wrong with that, you're paying for the support, hundred percent behind yeah. that, and. By all accounts, they have good support. And if you're going to roll your own and get something certified, Dell is absolutely that and Lenovo. Yeah. So mm-hmm. good to see that. Uh, stable Linux on Linux. This is not um, Pizibit episode two. <laughs> no, but it is a confirmation that Christini or the uh, Linux apps are coming to Chrome OS, the stable branch in version 69. Giggity. Uh, so if you have a Chromebook and the uh, OEM is keeping relatively up to date, mm-hmm. you're probably running versions uh, 67 right now if you're on the stable branch. So in a couple of uh, versions, you too will be able to uh, run your uh, supported, uh, natively supported uh, Linux apps on what is, let's face it, basically Linux. Chrome OS, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> but yeah, it, it will still be. Uh, this doesn't automatically mean that you will be able to access uh, uh, Linux apps on Chrome OS uh, just the moment that your Chromebook rolls over to version sixty nine. Uh, but it will still depend on the um, the OEM itself testing and verifying that yes, these work and we're okay with these, and them just saying okay, we'll just merge the Google. Uh, the mainline uh, version into ours and push that out. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I looked at this. Uh, This is interesting because you might as well start, if you're like me, I love my tablets, uh, paying attention because Googs is kind of making it crystal clear that (laughs) Chrome OS is the future for anything with a screen over seven inches. Yay. That's that's what I thought, Jill. And I saw the (laughs) Acer Chromebook (laughs) 10. That looked yeah. great. Yeah. I watched some YouTube videos of it. Then I went and played with one. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. <laughs> oh. Right now yeah, in its current slow state. Yeah, are a bit too slow. You know, that's not even. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not yeah. even the problem, man. That's not the problem. The problem is using Chrome OS without a keyboard. Yeah. No. Horrifying. <laughs> it, it's something you could do with a loaded gun to your head, but probably wouldn't volunteer for it. If it's just for media, you don't really need the keyboard. That's why this one actually spends a lot of time in tent mode. Well, you see, that's the thing. That's why I still drag around my old Nexus 10. Ain't a, because I paid half a grand for it when it came out. Uh, but I have one of those little Bluetooth uh, keyboards that I take with mm-hmm. me, and it's capable of doing docs and stuff like that. It's a, it's a one-task type deal, but I would like something that I didn't have to have a key. You know, if you got a keyboard, you're like, what? That, that's mm-hmm. like a laptop with extra steps. So yeah, they're, mm-hmm. they're going to have to do some work with Chrome OS. Hopefully they will. Um, yeah. Jill, mm-hmm. do, do and, you even play around with tablets? Uh, yeah, I do. Actually, I still use my HP touchpad with oh. WebOS on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I have it also Android on it, and I keep the Android up to, up to date. It still runs beautifully on it. <laughs> I tore this house apart looking for my uh, BlackBerry uh, oh, running and QNX. I can't reach it right now, but it, yeah, it's right around the corner from my um, hand. <laughs> I got the playbook <laughs> as well. <laughs> that is cool. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we got up next? Oh, that's right. The Nightmare Fuel. Uh, yes. Yeah. Vim. <laughs> Dot W-A-S-M, Vim Editor, ported to WebAssembly because some people want to watch the world burn. Um, this project is an experimental fork of Vim by RHS, RHYSD to compile it into WebAssembly using Mscripten and Binarian. Um, try it in your browser. It works. I don't know why you do this. This is wrong. I do not approve of this because... This is like the multiple steps leads to darkness. This is going to end up as an Electron app. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah, just so much easier to turn into an Electron app now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and I thought this was cool because it's, self con- it's self-contained. It's self And it's uh, you, you actually can. Uh, there are, are um, Linux distros that boot from, from websites that are available, which you can use Vim or Vion. But this is nice because it's sandbox and it just boots, you know, it's, it's right there. It boots quickly. <laughs> so, this is a pure, that's... unadulterated nightmare fuel. <laughs> this is, I, I am, I am, I'm of torn because this is so evil. It's, yeah. I love it, but it's like, this is wrong, man. Don't, don't, don't. However. I mean, 
how long would you say would you have uh if this hadn't come out how long would you have said that it would take for someone to do this <laughs> yeah <laughs> you knew this was gonna happen all right? yeah this is this is um giving a child you know a weapon of mass you you, you know our scientists were too busy but how long until we get visual studio yeah <laughs> that's pretty cool it's our, it already <laughs> runs on electron so it, it's already working in a browser <laughs> so yeah. what's the use case for this other than neat because don't get me right this is wicked wicked neat um educational purposes for classrooms oh so you can like teach children that emacs is superior <laughs> without actually yeah, having you to can teach it. people to uh, hate oh. the world from a young age yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to your hate now um yeah. <laughs> deb Con. oh and, th and thank oh. you for the stevo for that <laughs> right. yes uh so yes uh deb conf 18 it happened last weekend it's just another quick mention to keep an eye on their website and their uh youtube uh page because the videos for the latest panels have all been uploaded or are still being uploaded i checked yesterday and they had a bunch of new ones there's a couple of interesting ones uh if you just like to use well we do uh, do that Saturday podcast that is technically about gaming. Uh, <laughs> uh, so if you are interested in gaming, there are a couple of talks there. Uh, there was uh, a talk about uh, getting games to run uh, uh, properly in Debian, which uh, actually boiled down into getting framing, uh, frame timing under control for, say, a VR implementation where frame timing is very important. So, yeah, no, it's a very interesting, uh, there's a couple of very interesting talks there. So, yeah, give it a look. Hey, man, yeah, maybe they, they can give uh, Gary some pointers. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Rust. What was that, Joe? Oh, yeah. No, th these are awesome. I actually watch these every year to keep, um, I, I love watching all the Linux convention videos. And this is one of my favorites because it keeps me up to date on on the world of, of Debian and which is actually really my favorite distro if we get right down to it. <laughs> it's good times. Um, let's see. Mozilla. Oh, all right. Yeah. We, 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 <laughs> you, you, you get this off your chest. I'm going to chat. Yeah. At the end about something that just is bugging me about this. <laughs> okay. Well, this is uh, Mozilla changing their Firefox icons and they have a, a two possible uh, classes of icons and artwork uh, to choose from and uh, they want your feedback and as i was going through these i actually per prefer system two system for the two. default the default uh firefox icon Wait, all right how, how can you distinguish between kaleidoscope nightmare a and kaleidoscope <laughs> nightmare b yeah, well, uh, uh, A for one, it looks like the GitLab logo, so we don't want confusion there. <laughs> so, so, and I actually, I actually, um, I like the the look of of the the system two ones because it, they are crisper, have a, a nice use of negative space, and read better at a distance. And um, also, actually, for the the uh, second class of icons, I actually prefer um, the system two ones because um, the second class of icons, I prefer system two because of the same reason. It's like these, they, they have the two separate classes, but the, the second class of them doesn't match the first. It just, they don't, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but what it boils down to, what it boils down to is which icons do you like better? <laughs> Mozilla wants your feedback and comment in the blog post below. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> all right. First things first, I'm, I just, the <laughs> eyes roll back to that when you start talking about graphics and stuff. I know some people really dig it. <laughs> yes. Because a long time ago, I replaced all my icons, which is something, you know, just monochrome <laughs> and flat. If you've ever seen my uh, <laughs> function, function, function. But Pedro, I, I got to bring something up with you. I, I, I want your take on this. We do a little zoom in and ads because th mm -hmm. th this is on the main page. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still zooming. We're still enhancing. And 
Wait, is that the GitLab logo? Oh, wait, no, it's Firefox. Well, yes. <laughs> what we're talking about is, is this bottom section of the shirt that looks like something I shopped after a heavy night of drinking and not caring. Oh, yeah, no, that, that, that's a really bad shoot. <laughs> it, I mean, it doesn't even line up. And yeah. that it's like, oh, the shirt is all uh, scrunched up at the bottom, but the the icon itself is still perfectly going all the way down. I don't know why that it just caught my I, like from the thumbnail. I was like, something is wrong. I wouldn't look. So that completely invalidates like most things. I'm completely wrong about stuff. Um, everything I just said, no. because I care about that design. Not really, but it's like, come on, put a little more effort in that. If you're going to put yeah. it on that page. But they are looking for yeah. your feedback. Uh, the Mozilla mm -hmm. Project Foundation, we love that business. Keep doing the good work. And uh, yes. if that's the type of stuff that interests you, pretty icons, more power to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's talk about our favorite company that loves Linux the mostest. Yes, let's. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so Krita uh, had a bit of an update, and uh, they uh, read a foul of the... Um, the Windows Store <laughs> terms of service. Basically, <laughs> basically, before you get like three paragraphs in, I see the word sharecropper. So this doesn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so basically, what they did was uh, in the Windows Store, they're selling Krita for ten bucks, nine seventy nine, mm -hmm. and uh, they were uh, they were still advertising uh, mm -hmm. or quote unquote advertising. They were saying you can get it for free. If you don't mind compiling the code yourself by going to the Krita website, bah, 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 bah. and um, even though they say themselves that they see like three thousand downloads a week from their website and only a hundred and something from the uh, the Windows Store, Microsoft apparently doesn't like people advertising their websites uh, <laughs> on their store page. So they sent uh, the Krita developers a letter that said, "Look." We can't uh, feature your uh, your application on our store publicly unless you remove that mention that your um, that the software is available freely somewhere else. So the Krita developers, seeing as they do need the money, they were they decided to just okay, we'll remove that mention and we will keep selling. Now, what I want, what I would very much like to see is someone who doesn't need the money, in fact, someone who has a lot of money to spare, to take Microsoft to court on their end-user license agreements in terms of mm -hmm. service for their multiple uh, offerings. I really would. Yeah. Um, unpopular opinion. <laughs> I think this is great for Microsoft. This is awesome because it helps their store remain a ghost town. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No one is going to go in there after this and go, oh, it's a good place to be. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> in, in fact, a Microsoft asked credit and put their app in the Microsoft store in the first place because it was bare and didn't have, have good quality content. And so that tells you right there. <laughs> it's like, why are they so hell-bent on scaring away the few people who actively put good stuff on their store? Well, they yeah. also actively pay people to put stuff on this. So I don't yeah. know. I mean, yeah. I, I always try to see both sides on this, but I mean, if they're, they're genuinely just linking back to their website and they get a problem with that. That's just, that's bad communication at Redmond, but what's yeah. new? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And they need to update their, their GNU licensing, um, you know, allowing that because they, this is actually against that. <laughs> so <sighs> you, can, you can't not have your project up there and have a link to being able to modify the code. Well, I always say it comes in cycles. Every now and then Microsoft yeah. to do something not incredibly <laughs> stupid. Mm -hmm. They'll do something that even borderlines good. Then you just sit back, make some popcorn, you wait for it. Yeah. <laughs> here, here it was. It's like, there, there we go. All right. That's things. So I'm going to try to explain... To everyone, oh. well, this, why this is good. No, not just because you get to see, if you've been watching for the you know past day or two, people screeching like, no, you can't do this. We're talking about DOS, not like a DOS attack or um, <laughs> DOS 6.2 for Windows. No, DOS. Um, that's Windows as a service, basically. Goodbye to your PC as you know it. From Computer World, again, everything's in our show notes. <laughs> 
uh, this dude, he kind of goes through, you know, PCs for 30 years. We got away from the mainframe thing and Microsoft hates us and they're going to make you rent licenses and all this business out for your operating system. You know, because Microsoft even said Windows 10, that's the last version of Windows. It's just going Ooh. to be upgrades from then on out. So, you know, most of us, I'm sure everyone listening to this show has definitely sniffed this out years ago. But if it's not yeah. crystal clear to you right now. <laughs> Microsoft is transitioning into a services company, a la IBM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. this managed desktop, it is desktop as a service. I mean, their goal, to be fair, is to provide customers the ability to leave Windows 10 to lease, leave. Uh, when did <laughs> Pedro, you've just jacked me up today. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you can lease your Windows 10 device, but you don't have to... Uh, buy the license and all that fun stuff. You're just renting it. Uh, yeah. But they're going to keep it up to date for you, which if you've ever dealt with Microsoft mm -hmm. service packages, uh, mm -hmm. that might sound uh, more terrifying than about anything else I could think of immediately. So um, what I've watched uh, online, here's what I want to say is this Windows 7 forever and all that. And that's going to drop support. They've tried desperately to get more Windows 10 adoption, even so far as going for the gaming stuff with DX12. Was that where you were going with that? Yes. <laughs> and everyone went, hey, look at this Vulcan thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. But mm -hmm. Jill, am I crazy about this? Because yeah. I, I don't you, if you're going to be yeah. getting you're not going to go to the store. You're mm -hmm. not going to buy a, a box full of Windows. Come home and put it on your system, it's just going to be a subscription service like Office 365 or something like that, or Adobe, as you're going to talk yeah. about in a minute. I honestly, <laughs> w w w I, more I think about this, I don't think this is like my crazy, insane prediction, but I could see, you know, a couple of years out, Microsoft also offering like Ubuntu desktop as a service as yeah. well, as terrifying <laughs> yeah. as that That's sounds. Scary, Running yes. on the WSL, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'll probably hopefully be the server edition. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but as Ben was saying, uh, to me, Microsoft is going the way of Adobe's creative cloud. You know, they they had kind of uh, they were one of the first to get into that big and and that caused a lot of problems with our education system. Me personally being a teacher, it's been a pain in pain in the you know what. <laughs> and <laughs> and so I, so having Microsoft do this doesn't, you know, doesn't surprise me. Mm. And yeah. yes, <laughs> I see a disturbance in the force, and our penguin army is growing as a result of it. Yay! Uh, it's, it may yet be a while before that happens. What I see yeah. coming is a lot of people running uh, pirated versions of Windows and having to do like a fresh install, or the pirate, uh, the actual pirates making those pirated versions available, having to compile like a little patch to so that people running the pirated version of windows can keep up to date otherwise there's just going to be a lot of people running way outdated versions of windows out there and it's just going to be hell yeah oh, uh, I, i'm going to be enjoying it for all the wrong reasons i <laughs> yes. really admit that i'm a horrible person um ladies and gentlemen it is one of my favorite times of the show before we get into the slice of pie is where we get to thank the beautiful people who make this show possible that you at home. Uh, we did a little bit of a redesign on the site. Uh, as Jordan pointed out, I simply installed a new theme and Yay. it does look a little bit better, but that's how we're rocking on. But we do need to thank uh, two new people this week, Pedro, that are. Yes. Bringing so uh, we have someone who's out there uh, just uh, stroking my ego. Uh, the real Pedro Matthews. You know, I was going to queue up that slim <laughs> shady bit, but I knew it would be a copyright strike. I wanted to have that sounder ready for you. But. Uh, so, yeah, the real Pedro Matthews uh, is one of our latest Patreons. And the other one is Mr. Stine Eric Svenheim. <laughs> yeah, he just recently followed us on Google Plus. I love yes. that. <laughs> Eric, good to see you. And the, finally, I get to meet the real Pedro. You know, there's a Pedro Mountain. Of course, there is. Uh, <laughs> there's a Pedro in Iowa, even though it's uh, they spell it Pedro over there for mm. some reason. Stay out of that one. <laughs> Hey, beautiful people. Uh, part of that redesign that we did for the web zone, we got rid of all the ads too. So we're like 100% supported Yay. by you lot. And uh, yep. you make it possible. 
we do a lot of stuff with that. Get some rewards. Come hang out with us in Discord. We're there the other six days of the week. If you're wondering, like, what's Discord? It's like Slack with a better UI. Trust me, it's not all about gaming. Even <laughs> st- your husband, Steve. Yeah. Can you use it? Uh, yes. Steve's going to love me after he hears that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks for making this yes. possible. Okay, let's get into a slice of pie. Do I have anything uh, loaded up this week? <laughs> Boom, I do. There it is. It's like pizza. Man, that looks like a voracious uh, piece That of is pie. actually a slice of pie, yes. <laughs> Winning. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Hacker Pi, man. Get started with ethical hacking using Kali Linux and Raspberry Pi because installing Kali on a Raspberry Pi gains you like 20 hacker points, right, Pedro? <laughs> no, no, 25 if you install it on a Pi Zero and you, the first thing you do immediately after you install it is replace GNOME with something that's actually usable. Yeah. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a handy step-by-step guide if you're new to this business but you know if you want to do pin testing on the cheap man all right yeah. i've never thought about <laughs> doing that um i i know that's got to be you somebody's like stupid Finn. you this is why you would do that i would do it just to say i did it jill yeah yeah well I, this is this is cool, but you could also just install Metasploit on Raspbian, but that would take all the fun out of it because <laughs> it, it is cool to have a uh, uh, Kali because it comes preloaded with a lot of pen testing tools and security tools that weren't previously available for the Pi. Mm-hmm. So that's really awesome too. And um, yeah, w- what better way to go war driving than with a Raspberry Pi? <laughs> war driving, we're showing our age. Uh, the, um, we were talking about this on the pre-pre-show uh, before. I was talking about like backtrack back in the day. It's like I never, outside of just a live CD. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> installed it, booted it up, got a list of applications, and yummed that into the box. What about you, you hacky McHacker? <laughs> yeah. I have Kali Linux working on my uh, cheapo Lenovo laptop. It's I did a full on install and it's uh yeah, even on dedicated hardware running not on a uh, not off of a live session but actually installed. GNOME 3 is still slow. Mm. Damn it's still slow. <laughs> All right. So, music. It's thing you can do it. Mm-hmm. Can you produce it on a Raspberry Pi? Uh, yes, but very slowly. Yeah, the audio <laughs> will deal. They have a little thing walking you through. It's like, yeah, man, you can set up a DAW because you're thinking, all right, you're going to be doing a multi-channel interface. You're going to be using a door. That's a bit heavy for a Pi, which I would say, yes, yes. it is. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. definitely. <laughs> but they're going to be talking about non, which is mm-hmm. wicked small, fast, lightweight, reliable, and most importantly, modular that you can. Oh, yeah, it's completely free. Check that out. And it's not completely foggy. I looked at that and I was like, I, I could make a thing with that. It wouldn't be good, but it's only 43,000 lines of code. That's impressive all by itself. Get Jack set up and go to town with it, with a little pie. The only, they do make a point in, um, on this post is, well, think about all the money that you're going to save instead of buying a computer. You can buy a pie <laughs> for uh, your sound cards or anything like that. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Even Usually you, have you would the use three... this as a supplement. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry, Even if you that. have the 3B plus, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> that, uh, what is it? A quad core uh, 64-bit arm at one point something gigahertz? Yes, it will handle like input. If you have a bunch of uh, different instruments and a microphone plugged into it, it will handle probably all those inputs just fine. It's just any kind of processing and you No. Well, I think it's a neat idea. We need to point out that Dak Nebo sent this over. Um, yes. We're about to get to mm-hmm. a little bit of feedback. This is a neat project. Uh, mm-hmm. I've never even crossed my mind. I know the uh, Forbes tech writer was like, how do I do the music on the Linux? And, well, I don't know. <laughs> this, this would make for a fun article. That's all I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> yes. And... <laughs> You know, it maybe here's what I'm thinking because I, I I took the Jack Challenge and I played around it. We have a four input, four channel, well, more than that, interface, and to do multi-track recording, 
It's like, you know what? No. Mm -mm. Because Jack's fussy. <laughs> it is. So this might be a good solution to have a... That's what I said back yeah. then. It's like, if I had just had a dedicated box to set that up yeah. and that's it. But a robot, you know, what is my purpose? I was like, mm -hmm. you record the audio. So that's neat. Go out there and play with it. Uh, maybe we got some stuff right. Maybe we got some stuff wrong. Maybe we want to ask some questions. Pedro, how would they go about doing that? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a multitude of different ways, including us, uh, including approaching us on the street, hugging us to death. But then we wouldn't get the chance to actually answer your questions. I don't think so in the history of ever anyone saw me and said, hmm, I want me a hug out of that. <laughs> You're just like a big old fuzzy teddy bear. With a fuzz. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, if you, the best way to actually get in touch and uh, ask some questions about what we said on the show or that you feel that we missed is to go to livesgamecast.com, that fancy new website, uh, live, uh, fill out the form in the contact uh, side of that page, and um, well, it just make sure to pick LWDW from the little choosy thing, and uh, it's just a regular captcha now, so unless Google asks you to train their AI... You're good to go. Listen, you got to be careful about that caption yeah. because I was buying <laughs> gift copies of um, the Humble Bundle. I, I sent mm -hmm. you in a, not really a gift. We were using Patreon for that. But Did it ask you to find Sarah Connor? Man, you would <laughs> think it was borderline that because it was walking. It was like, oh, are you done finding bushes? All right. Well, <laughs> that's, like, that's the first time I saw that. And there was a couple of like find hills, which was like what on the left side? I, I, okay, goops. <laughs> Okay. So, Jill, who do we have yeah. this week? They have some questions. Yeah, we have Luke. And he says, Hi, are these two podcast released under an open source license? If so, what one? Kind regards. And yes, I know in the past, Ven has mentioned that these are these are uh, open, but... Completely proprietary. <laughs> <laughs> we will Creative sue you. something. <laughs> <laughs> we will create lawyers out of it. No, man. Um, uh, I wrote Luke back, but I just want to let everyone know in case I wasn't perfectly clear. I was like, hmm, I just got to assume it's Linux. And that would be really bad for business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything we do is CCBYSA, which basically yeah. it's not a bunch to oversimplify is you can do do what ye will with everything we make as long as what you release is under that same license, which, yeah. I mean, you can even use it for commercial purposes, but it can be limited. And that goes for videos, audios, uh, graphics. I don't know. You might have to talk to empty about some stuff, man. He could be very, uh, <laughs> very protect. Probably not. I don't know. I thought that was cool. I thought that was something yeah. that we needed to address. And that's probably yeah. something I need to put somewhere on that fancy new website we put together. Yeah. yeah. And maybe making page. sure that, that credit where credit is due, you know, whoever uses it. 2024, possibly <laughs> first quarter 2025. It'll, it'll be right up there. <laughs> all right. That's beautiful. That's mm -hmm. all we got this week. Thanks for hanging out with us. We enjoyed it. Everyone join us live. You can. Uh, maybe you're watching this on YouTube. I don't know. That's weird. Uh, but some people do, and there's nothing wrong with that. You could always leave us a comment there. Or I might get around to putting comments back on our site, but that's not something I'm looking forward to managing. Leave us a message on Patreon under the video if you want to do that, or just use that contact form that is purpose-built for getting in touch with us. That is uh, probably the best way to do it. But I don't get out of here because I'm, I'm Vince Stone. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Hi, are you? Pedro Mateus. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I, Look I, at you. No, no, no. You're Mr. I'm going to cut in line. <laughs> oh, hey, Jill didn't I'm say Jill anything, Ryan. so I jumped in. Oh, man. <laughs> this is exactly how he plays games, too. You can always tell where Pedro's at because he's the one <laughs> furthest away. <Aww. laughs> All right, beautiful people. We're going to roll those credits. Oof. Yes. Ah. They said that the uh, the heat wave was over here in the UK. Yeah, I'm still sweating, so I call BS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the humidity's up here in, in SoCal, which is unusual for us. I was about to say, yeah. LA doesn't have humidity. 
<laughs> yeah, we don't usually, but there's uh, some monsoons in Mexico that have come our way. <laughs> I've had somebody yeah. look me dead in the eyes. It's like, it's a dry heat, and I didn't hit them somehow. Oh, yeah, <laughs> usually it is. Usually it is. Where I'm going to Vegas, though, will be dry heat, even though sometimes it's it, there's monsoonal uh, weather there at times, too. But, um, but this time it, it'll be dry. <laughs> I saw what you did with the letters there. <laughs> Wait, uh, I didn't do anything. You, you've seen stuff. Man. <laughs>